Hello guys, welcome back to Hangar 51. Today we're going to do uh, the build video on the P-40 uh, Warhawk um, that I got from uh, LX Models from Banana Hobbies. So, um, it's going to be a step-by-step -step video. I'm going to edit it out just to keep it on, on, on track. So, uh, let's get to the first part of the video. Okay guys, so let's take a quick look at the... Um, instruction manual. You know, it's a full color, all picture instruction manual. Um, and this manual is, is written as if you bought the plane in kit form, meaning nothing's assembled. You have to put all the hinges in the control surfaces and ins install everything. It, it, it's bare foam and all the bits, and you have to put it all together, which is not what I bought. I bought the almost ready to fly version, or the plug and play version, which is requires very little work to put it together. You gotta glue the fuselage halves together. Um, you know, you always have to assemble a prop if it's a prop, so that's normal. Um, I have to install the motor, which is not normally normal, but again, it's not a big deal. Um, but the book is very confusing because it's giving you step by step to install every little nit nit picky nut bolt screw glue uh, you know gluing the hinges in and you don't have to do any of that so um, so you have to and there's and there's no real word instructions it's just picture after picture after picture there's some very small little um, instructions on every, every few pages there there might be a little bit of wording the wording's terrible um, and it's not helpful um, case in point the motor box the motor box is definitely set for you know down and you know, right thrust to counter the left torque but the box will fit the plane in any one of these four positions and they don't they don't tell you in the book which way to put it in so unless you've been a hobbying for a long time and understand that you need down and right thrust, um, you might put this in wrong. You might not notice that there's a, quite a bit of a angle on it and just arbitrarily throw it in there and, and have it installed in the wrong place. So um, um, just some of the things that the book's missing. You know, they show you pictures of the, you know, installing that, but they don't tell you that you need the S up. So there's, there's letters on it, S, Y, X, Z, and you want S up, okay, S up gives you down thrust and right thrust, again, to, to counter the left torque, so, but it doesn't say that in the book, the book doesn't give you that information, so other than all the pictures, the book's not very helpful at all. Because um, the pictures aren't that, um, I mean, I guess, I don't want to say they're not clear, but they're, you know, the pictures are great. They're small, but they're great. But without some explanation, like this, for instance, um, they show you gluing it in, but they don't, they don't tell you that you have to set the depth, you know. You can't just slide it in there and glue it in because the prop depth will be wrong or possibly could be wrong because it'll slide in as far as you want it. And if you slide it in too far without the motor installed and everything, you won't be able to uh, get the prop on it. You know, you'll be too far in; it'll be rubbing the cowl. And then on the on the other side of that coin is if you don't have it installed far enough, there's going to be a giant gap between the spinner and the uh, and the cowl. So, you know, so the, the instructions are not very good. Um, I'm not going to say they don't, they're not helpful at all, but they definitely could be better, for sure. Um, so here's the page telling you about the engine, you know, the installing the this. But they don't really say how you should do it, you know. How deep to put it in? Um, you know that the S needs to be facing up. They don't. They don't distinguish any of that. Um, 
So it would be really easy to put it in the wrong way. If you weren't careful, and if you weren't knowledgeable in the hobby, if this is one of your first airplanes, um, this would be a a real bummer if you installed it wrong because they didn't really tell you in the book here. Um, so, anyway... You know, somewhat helpful, but um, I'm, I'm hoping my videos m way more help to, to go along with this book to help you guys out. So, um, so that's just a quick rundown on the on the manual. Um, so, let's get back to putting it together. Okay, so. Um, had to do a little prep work before uh, gluing the two halves of the fuselage together. So what I did is um, I sanded all of this area here, get all the paint off of it. Here, here, inside here. And then if you've seen any of my other videos, I like to do reinforcement on foam pieces like this. So I've got my barbecue skewers already set in the back half. I've already done the alignment. Um, you know, basically I, I, I put a barbecue skewer in and just had the tip hanging out on one side. And then I align it and push it together and that point will put a little hole in the other side of the plane. So I can go ahead and feed a hole for that. And then I'll do the other side. I'll have that one in for alignment purposes and did do the same thing on the other side with the, just having the, the pointy tip sticking out to get an alignment hole on the other side and then put the barbecue skewer in. And then what you end up with is this. Um, let me move a couple things here out of the way. And um, so what happens then is this. You you put the two pieces together using the barbecue skewers. Now what I'm going to do is put a bunch of uh, epoxy all over this and then slide it together. And since I already have my alignment holes done, this is going to just slide right in. So I put that one in there, this one in here. It doesn't matter how long they are. They don't have to be the same length. None of that matters. Um, I just do this to add some structural strength. Um, okay. So, I'm going to stand this up for a second. And then I'll show you what it does. <clears throat> So, the end result here is this. You, you get the final done here, and you finish sliding it together, and what you end up with is everything's aligned for the gluing. And there's this structural strength of the, of the barbecue skewer helping. So now, We've got a nice tight seam here, both sides. The, the barbecue skewers are holding it together. Um, I mean, they're falling out slightly, but you, you get the gist of it. They're there helping add some strength and also keep it aligned for gluing. And uh, now I always use 30 minute epoxy for this kind of an assembly because that gives me some work time to get everything aligned, make sure it's straight, make sure it's tight together, and if I have to do any final cleanup of any additional epoxy that oozed out, you know, it gives me time to work with it without being too rushed. And then um, what, my, what I'll finally end up doing is just putting, um, standing it up on its nose, and uh, uh, on this particular one, I'll, I'm probably going to hold it, 
I mean, I mean, it's sitting together pretty good and everything, but I think I'm going to hold it together anyway. So let me flip it around here so you see the other side. Um, you know, same thing. It's, you know, nice tight joint here. Um, everything's well aligned. Um, the barbecue skewer is doing its job. If you slide it out here, you can see the, the barbecue skewer there. So we slide that together and it just everything's aligned. Um, nice and tight and then we'll uh, just hold it while the glue's drying and that'll that'll secure the back half of the fuselage with some extra reinforcing and um, I did the same thing on the, the front half as far as prepping you want to get all the paint off of it because the paint doesn't stick to the foam very well so if you're gluing paint to paint and the paint's not really stuck to the foam it's not going to stay together so I did the same thing here you know, I, I took all the paint off. Um, you know, in here, on on these flat, on this flat part here, because all of that's get uh, glued, and then on this edge all the way around here, and then a little bit here and here on the back on the flat part, and some of the paint came off here as well. You don't want to go too far out because what happens is if you get the paint. If you nick the paint off the, the very outer edge on either half, then you're going to have to touch it up because it's going to show that the paint's missing. So you don't want to get that close to the edge. You know, not that important, not that critical. I've got a huge surface right here and here, and then on the edge here, on um, both both halves, that's going to give me great bondage. It's going to, you know, it'll be a good solid bond. So you don't have to get that critical that you get every little inch of paint off of it. Um, this is going to be more than sufficient, plus the barbecue skewers. So this is going to be a, a real good um, bonding of the two halves. So uh, so let me get to the gluing, and on to the next segment. Okay, guys. So here's the finished product. It's all glued together. Bamboo posts or bamboo skewers are in there. Um, you can see the, the seam came out really nice right here. And now the uh, canopy just slides right in and out, just like it's supposed to. It's magnetic, so it snaps straight down into place, and you can almost pick the, the fuselage up from it. So so there you are. That, that came out really great. So let's move this out of the way real quick. Okay, guys. So... I opened my bag of goodies, and I got everything laying on the table here. This also, and these, and the prop, um, control arm, the little control horns, and a big bag of screws. So let me start with this. So, so my motor box was not uh, glued very well. Okay, it was, you know, it's all screwed along the front, so I wasn't too worried about this, but all the glue joints back here were all uh, coming apart. Looked like they used CA, and it didn't hold, and that's pretty much been my experience with plywood anyway, is the CA doesn't usually hold. So I took some 30 minute epoxy, I spread all this open, ran some 30 minute epoxy in every joint you know, then squished it all back together and then you gotta wipe off any excess glue on the outside because this this thing slides into foam and it's tight going in the foam so you gotta make sure you keep all the excess glue off the outside and then I just held it like this until it's set up then I mixed up another batch of 30 minute epoxy and I put a bead of it in each corner all the way down. So I've got a slight bead of 30 minute epoxy running in each corner all the way down. And then I just stood it up like that and let it dry. So the box is good and solid now. Um, so I'm really good with that. Now this box is built to automatically give you uh, your right pitch or, or thrust to counter the left torque 
and down thrust. But you have to index it the right way because it's a square box. So it'll fit in the plane in any direction. So there's Y, X, Z, and S. Okay? You want the S up. Uh, the S is what's giving you the right and down thrust. Basically, the box is tapering this way, corner to corner. And if you don't put the S up, okay, in this position, Y up, you've got a you've got up and right. And you don't want that. You want down down thrust, not up thrust. And in this position, you've got left thrust, which is totally not what you want. And then in this position, you've got up and left thrust. So, um, so you want the S, the, the, the block of wood that's S, got the S on it, you want that facing up. So that's the way you want to mount this in the plane. So you want to mount that in the plane. I'm going to put the motor on it. I'm going to put... Um, I'm sure I have the motor screws in here somewhere. So I'm going to mount the motor here. And I'm going to put the spinner, the prop, and everything on it as an assembly. Just like that. Just like this. And then I'm going to slide it in the plane and glue it. Because that'll, that'll set the, I can set the prop depth um, to the cowl with this assembly, you know, to set it in there. So that's how I'm going to do that. Okay, so let's take another look at the manual, because I was uh, incorrect a little bit. And I just want to kind of let you guys know that on the motor page where the box gets installed, um, I did notice that in this picture right here, the second one down in the middle here, that picture does show S. There's a little red box with the letter S on it. And you're supposed to know what that means. <laughs> so, uh, so they do tell you if you know what the hell, if you know how to decipher a red X in there, as that they mean that they want the S up, then, then you can read picture language, because I didn't know what that meant. Um, and I'll be honest, I didn't notice the S either. So, um, so anyway, yeah. So there is a, a marking that tells you that S is up, if you can understand what that means. Now, as far as the depth of the propeller, that also was uh, preset for you. There's two foam stops on the sides of the fuselage. Um, it's a little tiny piece of molded foam that sticks out from both sides that when you slide the box in you're going to hit those stops and that's going to determine your prop distance from the from the cowl but I did that and it's for me it was way too big a gap. I mean there's a huge gap between the back plate of the spinner and the cowl. So I didn't like that. So I took a knife and I cut those off so that I could slide the motor in farther. And then I used the, the cowl um, and I slid the prop in, you know, the, the box in and, and got a depth that I liked. And uh, I definitely moved it in a little closer. I didn't like how the big, the gap was just way too big. So, um, so that's an option you can do or not. You can either leave it the way it is. You can go ahead and slide it in one time if you want because the box will stop when it hits those foam tabs sticking out. And, um, and you're going to have a huge prop gap. Or you can cut them off like I did and then you can slide it in a little bit further and close that gap between the, prop, the back of the prop um, spinner to the cowl. And um, I'm going to, if you look at the picture right here I'm putting on the screen, you'll see right here that it, 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 to the right side of the, well, it's going to be your left. Um, 
the far left of the screen as you're looking at it, inside the fuselage, you're going to see that little piece of foam. And that's, that's what you want to cut off. Okay guys, so let's move on to the wing. Got a few minor issues here, nothing major. Um, so if you remember in my the uh, goodie bag with all the screws and everything, there were two aluminum tubes, this tube here. Okay, now this tube, um, it's a solid aluminum tube and that's about half of it. And there's an aluminum tube in the wing here and there's an aluminum tube in the center section here. Alright. Now, this tube, well actually both of them, were sticking out slightly. Um, they weren't they weren't completely recessed into the foam. So the problem with that is The two of them, the two tubes were hitting and preventing the wing from sliding all the way into the to the stops so that you can put the set screws in these little grooves. I don't know if you can see that, but there's actually a groove right there. And on the on the center section there's a screw in another keeper, just like these, this plastic keeper that's already glued into the wing. So when you slide this in. The two tubes were hitting in the center here, preventing it from sliding in far enough. So, what I did is I took a Dremel tool with a with a barrel barrel sander on it, and I sanded down that tube, and you could see some of the foam around it. And I what I did was I recessed this slightly, so that when that little bit of tube that's sticking out of there can go past you know, flush into this, and now it slides all the way in, butts up fully, and I can set the screws. These are the little set screws here. And um, what that does is it sets it so that it won't come out. Um, so that was one of the little things I had to do. Now, the tube here is continuous through the wing. So, if you... Uh, well, if, if it's, it, maybe it's not continuous through, okay, it's not continuous, but it goes way in. And when I say way in, it's just, if you take that tube and put it into here, it will slide all the way in. It'll, it'll disappear. Okay? And if you slide it into here, it will go in way farther than this. This is about halfway. It will go all the way in, so there's only about this much of it sticking out. Now, I'm sure that wouldn't be a problem, but I just figured I'd center it. So what I did, and I didn't do it so it would be permanent. I, all you want to do is stop this from just sliding around. Because with the right wing loading, it, it, you know, if there's no load on the tube and you make a bank, it'll slide all the way down inside of here, and you won't have any reinforcement in the middle of the wing, just these plastic pins. So what I did is I took a little contact cement and I put it on the tube and then I screwed the tube in and let the contact cement you know, wiggle around and, and go down and I went in and out and around with it and then I set it to halfway and let it dry. I did that on purpose because I don't want this to be permanent. If I need to get this tube out of this wing for whatever reason, I don't want it to be a fight. I want to be able to get it out. I just want it to stay here and not slide around in the wing so that when I put the wing together that I've got 50% of the tube on each half for, for strength. So I just put a little bit of contact cement on it and I ran it in and, and made sure, you know, I, there's no over glue sticking out here or anything. And, um, and it just keeps it from just sliding back and forth. And that's all I wanted it for. I don't need it for anything else. I just wanted it to stay here so that when I slid that in there, it wouldn't slide around, you know, because I just would hate to see me in a bank and get just the right wing loading, you know, unloaded, 
to the point where the tube got loose and just slid all the way down into the center section and now I don't have any tube between the two. So, so put a little contact cement on that, slide that in, and that should be good. And then um, the only thing else I can tell you right now, um, I did not get screws. Everything I got in screws is, is over an inch long, okay? Which is fine for all the control surfaces except the flaps. Okay, these are solid plastic flaps. And the actual part where the screw goes in is about a sixteenth of an inch thick. And the flap at its widest point is about an eighth of an inch. Okay? And it's a solid plastic flap. So, none of those screws are going to work that came with the kit. You're going to have to come up with your own screws. What I'm going to use, because it looks like it's going to work perfect, um, when you buy a servo, you know, any brand, it doesn't matter, you always get one screw that will go in to the to hold the arm on, and if it's a Metal Gear servo, it's going to have a machine thread on it, and if it's a standard plastic it'll have a, you know, like a sheet metal type screw in it. Um, I don't want to use that screw, but you always get two slightly bigger head uh, wood screw, sheet metal screw, whichever you want to call it, to install the servo, you know, to mount the servo. They always give you two screws with the servo to mount the servo. So that's what I'm going to use to mount my control horns to the to the flaps is the uh, servo screws because there's nothing that they gave me in the kit's going to work. Um, so that's what that's how I'm going to mount my arms. Now, the bottom of the wing's gray, but the only thing I got were green control horns, so they're going to have to be green. Um, I don't think that's a problem. I'm not concerned that they're not matching. You know, if that's a, a bother for you, then by all means, you know paint them gray or whatever you want to do, but that's that's minor stuff for me. I'm not worried about that. Now one other thing is when you plug your wing in and you tighten these screws down to hold it in, you've got one servo lead. Now you have a nav light and a aileron servo in this outer wing. Uh, what LX likes to do is they pick off the power to run the the nav light from the servo power. So they don't have a separate wire running in to, you know, do the lights and the servo separately. They do them on the same lead. So you're only going to have one lead to contend with. And if they wired it correctly, which on one of my planes they did not, actually it was the A-10, um, the, the, the right wing was dead. The, the servo worked, um, the light did not. So the only way to send a replacement would be to send me a servo with a green LED already wired, so I, all I need to do is install it. I haven't tested the lights yet, I don't know if they work, but yeah, you're only going to have the one lead. So, and it's, and they bury it in the, in the center section, so you're going to have that big plug, okay, and a little extra wire. So you're just going to kind of fold the wire gently underneath the plug and then shove the plug down into the plat the uh, foam and it'll it's a, just a pressure fit it's not going anywhere and uh, you know just like the wire going through the foam it's just you just slide it into the groove and it stays because there's enough tension there and sometimes you have to put some tape on them or glue but um, the plug will stay in for sure because it's pretty thick so you just plug your light in make sure you get your your uh, you know, yellow orange to yellow orange and brown to brown, and uh, you'll be fine there. And then just tuck the wire in. So, so that's my tips on the on the wing. Other than that, I don't know if the gear is going to work. Here's another thing about LX models: they don't use standard landing gear. And what I mean by that is they don't use landing gear that use the micro switches in the gear to run it. They have their own gear mechanism here. It's like a, uh, it looks just like a sequencer and this has got a timer on it. 
and it just runs the gear a certain time and shuts off. And I it, may, it might have a feedback thing as well, but we only have two wires coming out of here, so there's no no uh, there's three wires going to the board, but there's only power wires coming out. So they just reverse the polarity of the motor to make the gear go one way and then the other, and that's what this board does. So you have to run their landing gear with their board, okay? If you decide you're going to change landing gear, it's not a big deal. You just don't use the board because this board is set up to only run gear that have the wiring set up to reverse the polarity of the wire, you know, going in. Whereas a standard servo that's a three-wire servo has the reverser built into the servo at, at, the, at the motor end so that when the signal is sent, it reverses it inside the servo, not this one. This one reverses it here on the board, and you only have power wires, black, you know, black and red, going to the gear. So that's another thing just to be aware of. It's not a problem. I mean, and my other gears from this company have worked. You know, they work fine with this setup. Um, but that's just the way they do it. So, so that's what we've got on the gear. And... Um, and uh, and uh, and, I'm, and the wing ex the wing extensions. Just make sure you glue these in. That's critical. It's important that you do that. Um, and again, they don't have to be glued in for strength. You just want enough glue on them to keep them from sliding around. You know, I, I definitely want to be able to. If, if I have to replace this wing section, it's probably not going to come with this tube. I need to be able to get this tube back out of the wing. So I don't put it in there for permanent. Just put it in there to keep it from moving around. Okay. So let's get out of the next part. Okay, so the final uh, assembly piece here is to glue the tail feathers onto the fuselage. So as you can see here, I've removed all the paint again from this area in here. And the same on the fuselage in the back here. all along in here. So, and again, I'm going to use uh, contact cement to glue this because I don't want it to be I want it to be semi-permanent. I want it to stay on, but I also want to be able to take it off in the case of, uh, you know, if I mess up these tail feathers, I could buy replacement ones. And I want to be able to get them off the fuselage without destroying them, you know, so that I can reuse them. And uh, same thing if the fuselage, uh, you know, it, it, that's if I damage the fuselage and I want to reuse these, or vice versa. You know, if I damage these and I just want to buy new ones, I don't want to ruin the fuselage. So that's why I'm going to use contact cement to finish this up. Um, that way I, I know, uh, you know, in a worst case scenario, I can, I can get them off and replace them. Now what I'm going to have to do is all these wires have to be fed down through those two holes in the fuselage and pulled forward. So I'm going to use, uh, you know, I'll, you, you've all seen it, the piece of steel wire that you put a hook on and you feed it back through the fuselage through the hole and then you tie these to it and pull it through. So that's what I'm going to do to get all these wires. So, and the only thing I've got, this one wire is just the, the, the um, nav light that's in the middle of the rudder, okay? And then the other one is that it's got twin elevator servos, okay? And um, it's just going to pull the wires through for the elevator servos. And uh, there's a wide connector here to finish the, the, the rest of the way. So, um, so that should do it for the fuselage, and then the only other thing left to do is to glue on the, uh, and I'm going to put that on with contact cement as well, the, the rest of the cowl, you know, the shark mouth, the rest of the shark mouth on the front here for the cowl. Right here, it's going to, that's going to be put on with uh, contact cement as well in the event that I have to replace it. You know, I'll be able to do it without destroying it. So, uh, 
And then the last thing will be uh, the hook up the pull pull. There's there's the two uh, control horns for the pull pull on the rudder. And those wires are have been pre-run from the factory, um, and they they come out of the fuse slides right here. That's what these two loops are, right here and here. They just tuck the wire back in the the, the rod. So you just pull these out like this, okay? And then you're going to connect the uh, those. There's two. Um, um, control horns with a, a steel uh, threaded steel rod with an eyelet on the end of it and you have to tie these to that eyelet and they have to be pretty taut you know you're gonna you'll have a little bit of adjustment on each one but um, they give you these tiny little brass collets that are not going to come out on camera but it's, it's a tiny little brass collet that goes over the wire. I'll try to put one on this wire here so you might be able to see it on the wire. Okay, so there it is on the wire. And what you're going to do is loop this through the eyelet and back through that collet. So you'll, you're going to have a, a loop. And then you crush the collet onto the two wires to hold it. And that's what's going to secure that the, the little eyelet. I don't know if I have them out here or not. I don't think I do. I think they're in the house. Um, but that that's how you, the pull-pull system is going to work. They're already secured to the servo, so that end's done. Um, you just have to do this end. Um, and that'll take care of your rudder. Um, one last thought on this model that I, I touched on briefly, I'm going to touch on it again. Um, my advice to you is before you even get started on the model, clear coat it. You want to seal all these decals into this foam before you start handling it. Because what I've done, honestly, trying to be so careful not to damage it, I've done more damage to this airplane than any other airplane I've ever put together. You know, totally my fault trying to be too careful and I've been banging into things and putting hanger rash all over it and the decals have been pulling off um, that I'm gonna have to touch up now and if I'd have clear coated it when I started instead of starting this first I wouldn't I wouldn't have any of these issues so I would I absolutely recommend that you clear coat it with either the Minwax if you want to use that um, I, I like the uh, Duplicolor uh, Perfect Match protective clear coat. It's a spray can, it just sprays on, it dries hard, it's, it, 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 I, I don't think it's going to react to this, it's never reacted to anything else I've ever painted with it. Um, and I will, I will let you know by the end of this video whether I had an, an issue with that or not, but I don't think I will. Um, but yeah, i got to touch up all of this, this stuff that I've damaged. Um, um, so I, I recommend before you even start doing anything, before you even start putting it together, clear coat everything as an individual piece. Just before you start putting anything together, just clear coat it. You'll be thankful you did because all of these decals will have been sealed into the paint after that and you won't have these issues that I'm having. So that's my recommendation there. So uh, let's, uh, let me get this uh, finished up. I'm going to glue that on. I'll put the uh, the the pull pull system in place, and um, I don't think I'll probably do one more segment of me installing the prop. Um, I built the prop. It's all screwed together. I did all the sanding and everything. It's all deep burred, and you know, all the edges are smooth. I just have to balance it, and then I'll put it on the front, and I'll probably film that so that I can show you. How close my uh, cowl to spinner uh, distance is. I just want to document that on here so that when you go to put yours together, you can see where I have mine, you can see where it's going to come out on yours, and then you can make a decision whether you want to cut those little pieces of foam out to uh, tighten it up or just leave it the way it is. So you'll have that, I'll have that documented for you so you can make that decision. 
And then the last thing, I'll just take a picture of it all assembled. I'll have to put it outside to do that. We'll be outside for the final. Because it's just, it ain't going to fit in here. <laughs> it's way too big to fit in here. So um, it ain't going to fit on this little table for sure. So, uh, so that's how we'll finish it up. All right. So we'll be back shortly. Okay, guys. So here's the final. This is the pull-pull system. So you see... Uh, Got a, one on that side and one on this side. So that's the pull pull system. So you, the rudder's controlled by pulling each side. Not my favorite setup, but functional. Okay, so let's get to the prop. So the prop is a, one of those individual blade. Uh, build the hub kind of deal. And it came with this bag of screws, so they give you two extra because there's five screws in the bag. There's only three screws required on the prop hub. Um, but it's a tight fit and these there was flashing on all the blades um, right here where the seam is. Okay, there was flashing there and uh, it didn't want to fit in the hub. It wouldn't go down in the hub. And there was no way, I knew if I tried to just force it in with the screws, I was just going to strip the screws out. It just wasn't going to fit. It, they, they weren't sliding down in there. So I, I used a grinder and I ground it, it a little flat on each side. And then I took sandpaper and I just sanded the whole thing to smooth it out. And, I, and I, little by little, I did that on each blade until I got all three blades to sit down in the hub correctly so that when I put it together, you know, the, the, the seam here will tighten up, you know, when I, when I put the screws in now, it'll tighten up and it'll be fine. So make sure you, you know, you're going to have to prep this prop um, to get it to go together right. So don't get too crazy now. you got to go slow, take your time. Because if you over sand and these get loose, that's not going to be good. You don't want these things, you know, moving in there. You know, they're, they're just, they're way too tight without a little, you know, a little massaging. So, you know, so get some sandpaper. I was using some 220 grit. I used my bench grinder and I ground the flat area where I needed it. And then I dolled it up with sandpaper to smooth out the where I ground it. And I try to do each one about exactly the same. Try to keep the, the weight even so it's not out of balance. I'm going to balance it anyway, but you know, you want to keep that as, as close as possible to even. And then one more thing I do on props. I do this on all my props. If you feel these edges, you'll feel that they're not... It's not smooth. It's got a really sharp edge and it's and it's a rough edge. It's not smooth. It's, it's There's all kinds of imperfections when it comes out of the mold on the edges. So what I do is I take, again, some sandpaper and I sand all of these edges smooth. You know, I round them, you know, just slightly, but to take the sharpness off of them and to smooth them out. Because if you've got that kind of a prop, nice and smooth like that, it's going to be whisper quiet. I mean whisper quiet. So, so I do that to all my props. I'm going to do it to this one too. I've got to sand all these edges that are sharp and, and irregular and, uh, and round them slightly. Just, you know, take, you know, basically break the edge on all three of the props and screw it together. And, uh, and that'll, and that'll, uh, that'll get this ready for, for flight. Okay. Um, what else? Right now, um, I don't know what these pieces are yet. Of course, this is an antenna. Probably won't put it on. If I do, I won't glue it. Bits like this, um, are good, you know, when they're dialed up for a static display. This is a pitot tube. And these things are great for, you know, static display. Real, you know, 
scale, but when you put the stuff in the car and you got these things poking out everywhere, they just poke into other airplanes, end up causing more hangar rash. Um, I, I just don't like it, so I, I don't generally put those things on. I never glue them on. Um, that way, if I want to put them on, I can, and if I, you know, need to take them off for whatever reason, I can, and that's that's how I do it. Okay, so these are the control horns that I still have to install. Uh, the rudder is going to take two, one on each side, because it's a pull-pull system. So we got to do the pull-pull on the rudder. And then I have to mount two of these to the flaps, because there, there's no horn on the flaps, and two of these on the elevator, there's no horns on the elevator. And then these are the back plates. And then I've got some other bits here, I'm not sure what they're for. Probably some more scale stuff that I more than likely won't put on the plane. Um, these little, you know, like this for instance. This I put on the plane. It's it's the, you know, the 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 sight. You know, the gun sight. The uh, what do they call it? The turkey, the the bird uh, kill or whatever. Um, it goes inside the cockpit. It's not going to get snagged on anything. It's not going to be a problem. So this is okay. I'd, I'd put that on. I don't know what these are yet, so I'm not sure what to do with those. Probably won't put them on. I don't know. We'll see. They, they look like the wing supporters on my my Cub, but I don't know what they are. There's four of them here, and I don't know what they are. We'll find out. And uh, these are the gun barrels. Which again, way too big. These are these are cannonballs. These aren't bullet size barrels. They're cannonball barrels. So I'm probably going to change that to something more realistic because that's just crazy. So anyway, so that's where we are right now with the, with all this. I'm gonna gonna get this set and go glue that in the fuselage. So you'll see that next. I'm gonna finish uh, you know, screwing the prop together because I needed to set that. Um, so, so well, let's get on with it. Okay, guys, so this is the final, uh, the final. We're, we're done assembling it, it's ready to fly, and, uh, it's pretty damn big. <laughs> so, I don't know if, let me try, maybe this will give you a better perspective, but, So, you know, it's it's a monster. Okay, here's the gear. Pay, pay attention to the tail wheel. The, uh, the doors are spring-loaded to open automatically, um, and then there's cords that pull it shut. But the doors are on springs to open, and so are these. These main gears are the same way. They're on springs to open, and then there's cords that pull it shut. Okay, and this is the final walk around. So. I think it's very cool that it has two LEDs on each light. There's two on the wing, on the two greens, two reds, and then two reds on the tail that blink. So what you have here is a nice bright green one on the top, and then another nice bright green one on the bottom. One's facing upward, one's facing downward. Same thing on the the other uh, the red lights. Same thing. There's a real bright one on the top, facing up, and then another bright one on the bottom, facing down. Okay, and then on the tail, there's this nice bright red one blinking and another one on the other side blinking, but they don't blink at the same time. So you'll see that double wink, 
and they and they don't blink. So they're going to get in sync, and then they'll get out of sync again too. But there's a red one facing this way. <clears throat> And the red one facing this way. And this is the final, guys. It's it's finished. Ready to fly. I might put some uh, different gun barrels on it. I'm not putting the ones that came on it on it for sure. Um, but I might put some, some gun barrels on it. But I don't need to put those on to fly it. And then one last thing I want to show you guys. Um, let me go down here. Is the gap between the the, the uh, spinner and the cowl. That's a much tighter gap than it came stock. So if you don't cut off those foam pieces like I showed you in the video here, your your gap between the spinner and the cowl is going to be much bigger than that. So just be aware. But that's the final, guys. She's all done. Came out beautiful. Uh, one last thing. Um, I did add a piece of tape to the battery door because if you pull... If you try to pull it off from these finger pulls, you're going to crush this foam. You're going to knock all the paint off. It's going to look terrible. So I added a big piece of packing tape here, clear packing tape, so that I could pull the door off that way and not damage these. Because this is just not going to work to pinch this. You're going to ruin it. So just add a piece of packing tape. There is a magnet inside here. It should stay on. It's tongue and grooved on the front. And... Um, Okay, so it should uh, it should stay on, and the, you can't even see the tape, so no problem there. All right, that's it. Hope you enjoyed the build video. So you guys know what to do: like, subscribe, down below. Comments are very welcome. And uh, if you have any questions, again, leave them below. I'll be happy to answer them. So this is Hangar 51. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. Okay, guys. So here it is. Um, I didn't think I could get it in here, but it's here. <laughs> Just barely. <laughs> so this is the wrap-up. It's all finished. A um, couple of things. Uh, last minute little details I want to go over with you. Uh, the build went well. Um, I pointed out some of the problems I had with it. So a couple of last minute things I did. Um, I wasn't too happy with... Um, the strength of the fuselage back here, it seemed to be flexing a little too much. So I did add another pair of barbecue skewers. And I went in through the, right here on both sides, and diagonaled it down, down through here, to about here. So there's a second barbecue skewer at a diagonal now, going across this seam, starting here and diagonaling down until about here on both sides, just to give it a little more rigidity, um, keep this gap from the the uh, canopy even. Um, it, it was tending to flex a little too much, and now it's staying pretty good, so that, that helped. Um, one of the other things I did on the pull-pull system, I didn't crimp the little copper uh, ferrule that they give you. Um, the, the, the little wire leader line that they give you went through and, you know, went around and back through, and I was able to pull it tight just by sliding it up close to the, 
to the clevis, and um, I was afraid that if I crimped it, instead of it being that round circle where it was pretty tight, it would oblong it, and then it would get loose. Um, so instead of doing that, I just slid them up, snugged them up tight, and then I put some 5-minute epoxy on it. Um, I just felt like that would be the better way to handle it. Um, so, yeah, I just dabbed a tiny bit of 5-minute epoxy on both sides of the copper ferrule so that it would, you know, stop the, it, you know, to stop the, the leader line from being able to slide through. It, it, sh it should work. I, I think it'll be fine. I feel better about that than crimping it. So, so that's how I handled that. Um, anything else? No, everything's pretty good. It went together well. Um, I had to grind these plastic engine uh, stacks. Didn't just slide in. I had to grind them a little bit. Not a big deal. You know, a little, little sanding, a little Dremel tooling. Um, I did... Uh, I think I mentioned it already, but I'll, I'll mention it again. I did put a piece of tape here. Um, I, I wasn't comfortable. They, they give you two finger pulls in this battery hatch. And I just know I was going to ruin the foam if I kept trying to pull it off through that hat, those, those finger pulls. So, um, so I didn't do that. Um, I, it's, it's trung and grooved on the front, and I just there's a magnet in the back. So I added a piece of tape. So that, you know, it, it's down in there and it's latched to the magnet, but I can pull it off with the tape. So that's what I did. I'm, I'm, I'm happier with that. Um, other than that, I think, other than damaging the hell out of it all over the place, um, it came out good and I'm happy. You know, it looks good. Um... The spinner to cow distance looks good. I'm happy with that. I'm glad I cut that foam off. Um, I recommend you guys do it too. Listen, you can always cut it off, and then when you're sliding it in to glue it, you can always pull it back out to where it was, you know, if, if you're worried about it. Um, you know, you're using 30 or 45 minute epoxy, and you slide it in there, and, you know, you've got time to move it around. And... Uh, but if you do that and you don't cut the foam, you're that's it, man. When you slide it in and it bumps that foam, you're done. You can't you can't change your mind then. So I highly recommend cutting those so you can get it in tighter like I did. Very happy with that. The prop was way out of balance. Make sure you balance it. I had to sand the hell out of one blade and then put a lot of paint on the other two to get them to balance. And it, it balanced up, but it was... It was way out, so be careful of that. Be real mindful of that. Um, other than that, I'm just looking forward to flying it. It's done. It's ready to go. Um, I have to tidy up the the battery bay or the uh, the radio bay here um, because to take the oh, there is one other thing: the, the screwing the screws the wing on. Um, I'm having trouble getting the screws to line up. Um, as a matter of fact, I had one that took forever. I finally got it, but the, uh, now I have another one that I, I didn't get. So right now there's only three three of the four screws holding the wing on. I can't get the fourth one to line up with the hole. So be mindful of that. You know, it's going to be a little tricky um, to get that. May, maybe. I mean, every, every plane's different, so you may have some trouble with that. Um, other than that... I think we're good. I can't think of anything else left for me to do. I'm, right now I'm just playing with some... I just glued these uh, st the uh, exhaust stacks on and you know, I've got some strings of contact cement just dangling off of it and I'm farting with it, but no big deal. It, it, they'll pull right off. Um, yeah, yeah, I think, uh, think I'm going to wrap it up. It's, uh, it's finished. I hope you enjoyed the build. I hope this helps you guys um, either make the decision to buy this plane, or if you do, um, uh, I hope it helps you put it together easier. Um, like I said, nobody had done a build video on it, so that's why I did it. 
and um, you know, comment down below. Like me here, like me on Facebook. Uh, hope you subscribe, and um, we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.